Dr. Elliot Sorin is with us. Sir, thank you very, very much for joining us here in the studio. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honour. Thank you, Johnny. Thanks for having me. Now, you are a British-Israeli consultant, an orthopaedic trauma and hand surgeon, based in London, born in London, grew up here. You've also worked in South Lebanon, in Gaza and the West Bank as a doctor. You worked at the Tel Aviv Medical Center during the second intifada, which Chen mentioned. Treating the bomb blast patients and shooting victims from the Dolphinarium attack, which was basically kids queuing up outside a Tel Aviv attraction on the seafront and they were blown up. Mike's Place, which is underneath, I think, the American Embassy. Correct. British Pakistanis blew it up, killed the security guard on the front, mindless hapless, senseless violence. And indeed, more recently, your own son, Ariel, actually survived the Nova Peace Festival, this you know, sort of Woodstock thing going on a mile from the Gaza border on October the 7th, where basically the battalions went through and killed hundreds of kids, just having a nice time, dancing in the moonlight and having some fun. Um, you lost a friend and a cousin who were murdered on that day, and you even have a friend as a hostage. Elliot, this is the credentials of someone who should be on this show, and you say that in a newspaper article that Hamas have been the scourge of your life for the last 20 years. Well, it's more than 20 years. It's, in fact, um, 33 years, in fact, um, during the I was, first... I was trying to be kind. <laughs> OK, no, I'm, uh, I'm older. Um, <laughs> not like Ken, the previous speaker. <laughs> but, no, I've known Hamas my whole adult life. Um, uh, I, I um, got to, it all began when I got talking to a beautiful Canadian girl um, in Tel Aviv called Marnie Kimmelman um, on the 28th of July 1990 and the next day she was killed by a, a Hamas bomb which was planted on the beach uh, by a terrorist called Yasser al-Hijazi. Um, I studied medicine and I, um, and I did my military service my regular service as a doctor inside southern Lebanon. That was against Hezbollah. But um, when I returned uh, to Tel Aviv, um, I, I did my trauma surgery training in the Tel Aviv Medical Center. And it was Marnie Kimmelman's family who donated the trauma room, the recess room. So her picture was on the wall. And yes, I operated on the wounded from uh, the Dolphinarium, um, mutilated horrifically injured teenagers, Mike's place. Um, two British uh, Pakistani terrorists. Um, I had to amputate two arms that evening. Um, the Seder night bombing on Passover, on Pesach, the Park Hotel bombing with horrifically injured elderly people, Holocaust survivors, uh, many, many other bombings. I've also operated on Hamas terrorists themselves. Um, I've treated them uh, uh, from the shooting in the seafood market. My wife is a paediatric intensive care nurse and she's had to look after the children uh, of, um, of Hamas terrorists who have what's called a work accident when they're preparing a bo uh, bomb at home and the, the house explodes. So yes, Hamas has been, Hamas has been a large part of my life and uh, once again my son um, uh, survived this uh, horrific uh, massacre. Uh, 364 were killed at that party. And that was on a day when over 1,200 killed uh, the biggest massacre which we've seen in the history of Israel. If you look at it in terms of the United States, it's kind of 15 times the size of 9-11. So, yes, um, I'm very familiar with this. Uh, I've, I've also taught uh, Palestinian doctors from Gaza. I've taught Palestinian residents in Tel Aviv. I've trained them. Um, it's been a large part of my life. Uh, yeah. Right. So there's a lot going on there. Can you just explain, first of all, how Ariel survived? Because hundreds didn't. OK, so the story... Um, so the story is I'm very proud of my son. I'm very happy he's alive. And um, my hearts are with the family of those that have, uh, did not make it. My hearts are with the family of the hostages, um, with uh, Miran Ziv, the wife of uh, Shlomi Ziv, a friend of mine, who is still listed as amongst the hostages. But my son... Um, the story is, I woke up on that morning, it was Simchat Torah, it was a Jewish festival, uh, Saturday morning, started listening to the news, I heard something was going on, I um, telephoned my son and uh, on WhatsApp, and it went to the WhatsApp video, which I don't normally do, for some reason, you know, sometimes you press on the wrong button, and he's holding the phone up and he's running in a field, and I had no idea what was going on, and he just said, listen, I can't talk, I can't talk, I can't talk. I just thought that was all very peculiar. What I didn't realise was, he didn't want to worry me. He was actually being hunted 
um, as he was running. My son arrived at the festival and he was early, much earlier on, in the middle of the night he got there, and he was the designated driver. Um, uh, and um, when he heard the mortars and the, the rockets, saw the rockets in the air and he heard mortars land, he said to his friends, let's pack up. It was sort of Glastonbury thing. They've got their kit, they've got their tents there. He said, let's pack up, let's get out of here because gonna, they're going to stop the uh, festival. Uh, let's go and get to the car park before there's a, uh, a rush. And on the way to the car park, he heard the music uh, uh, stop. He got in the car and started driving, but large traffic jam. And then he saw a woman uh, close by being shot in the head. And my son had the foresight to tell his friends to leave the car. And they ran. Those that stayed in the car, uh, I, I think it's important to understand the level, uh, we're talking hundreds of terrorists. Um, my son, he said he saw them armed with rocket propelled grenades, uh, uh, with AK-47s. Uh, um, because it was a battalion. The, 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 the were, the were, the were, and they just arrived through the broken fences and hand glided there. It wasn't, you know, 15 people. It was hundreds it of was terrorists. It was over 3,000. 3,000 terrorists yeah. at the Nova Festival. No, I, I don't know. How no, many across the... Know, OK, how many were at the Nova Festival? I don't know exactly. But what I do know is my son said he also saw, um, as he was running, and it's very open fields, there's nowhere to hide, as he was running, people were dropping beside him, and he saw um, on, they were on jeeps firing a, a 0 0.5 calibre Browning machine gun. And these bullets, they can, they'll make a hole the size of a watermelon in, in, in a body. And he saw people dropping beside him, and he just ran and ran and ran. And... Um, and it turns out, I'm very proud of my son, um, by pure coincidence, he bumped into his cousin, Marianne, uh, who was frozen, hiding on the ground. He grabbed her to come with him. Um, and also he had a friend that was uh, a bit high, um, who he managed to grab with. He saved a few lives, my son. I'm very, very proud of him. Um, he kept on running. And as they kept running, they were constantly hunted. He ran 15 kilometres, uh, my son as well. Uh, and um, he's actually coming to London on Tuesday. So... Um, that's the story from that day. A horrific day, which I might add, um, the Nova Festival was only a small part of that day, whilst it was 364 uh, killed. Um, when I talked about... Um, I've treated many wounded from uh, bombing attacks, from shootings. I've seen mutilated teenagers. I've seen uh, elderly people. The horrors of that day are beyond anything. I've spoken to colleagues of mine. The level of, of mutilation, of atrocities, of torture, uh, of burnings, uh, beheadings. Uh, we're talking um, pure evil that happened on that day. Um, something we have not seen um, in the history of Israel. We haven't seen this since uh, 1929, since the uh, Hebron massacre. Yes. Now, you say you've operated also on Palestinian terrorists, on Hamas terrorists, you put them back together, and even those people who've blown themselves up by accident in their own home. Have you talked to any of these people? Did they say, thank you for saving my hand? And did they say to that afterwards, oh, we're still going to kill you? This is, this, is, this is the sort of narrative that seems to go on every time an Israeli surgeon operates on a Palestinian terrorist. Uh, listen, in a hospital, we don't have politics. We, we work together. It's important to understand that 20% um, of Israelis are Arabs. The vast majority of them are Muslims. Uh, the head of the department, which I trained in, uh, is a Christian. Uh, the deputy head nurse is a Muslim. Uh, we work together, we live together. It's not like uh, people... I, I realise people give a very distorted narrative in the West. It's important to understand that um, that many of the killed, the murdered, on the 7th of October were Israeli Arab Muslims. Hamas shot uh, Muslim women in the face when they're wearing their hijab. Yes. Uh, 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 they took um, uh, Israeli Arab Muslims as hostages. Uh, thankfully, uh, uh, from the Ziadna family, Aisha and her brother Bilal were released. We still have um, uh, two members of her family still uh, inside Gaza, along with Hisham al Sayed, another Israeli Arab Muslim who's been there for nine years. I see no differences in Israeli between a Jewish Israeli, a Muslim Israeli, a Christian, a Druze, a Cherkessi, a Baha'i. We're the only country in the Middle East which allows Ahmadi Muslims to live in peace. We're a very multicultural society. People do not understand this. There is a narrative being pushed. Um, I have seen on TV, um, I can only call it a a feeding frenzy of fools. I'm seeing British Pakistanis, British Bangladeshis, I'm seeing uh, convert talking utter nonsense. Okay, these people have never probably never been to the Middle East. 
أنا بقي عربي أكثر من كل واحد منهم. I speak Arabic better than any of them. شكرا. عفوا يا عيوني. And um, I speak, I am from the region, okay? So it makes me laugh. It doesn't make me laugh. It's sad yes. when I see people trying to turn this into a conflict. But going back to your question, in a hospital we don't have politics. In a hospital terrorists, which I've treated like a polite, in a hospital they do say thank you. And in a hospital they do say, uh, I'll meet you one day on the battlefield. And nice. they come out with the, these nice. phrases. And it is upsetting. Uh, obviously. Yeah. Um, but um, it, it's not like on Grey's Anatomy where a doctor has these internal conflicts about treating patients. A patient is a patient. I treat the fracture. I treat the wound. Um, it's harder for my wife, being a nurse, is more intimate and more connections with the family on a day-to-day -day level. So it was harder for her. But um, it's not like Grey's Anatomy. We're very professional. And also, I, I want to say that um, it is Israeli Jews... Um, Christians and Muslim soldiers together fighting, uh, and Druze and Cherkessi fighting uh, uh, the Hamas terrorists now as we talk.